Hello, good afternoon everyone. So welcome to another aspect of me doing things in my art studio. Uh, it's, also, it's still actually in the social distancing period, so I'm still at home doing a lot of things. And I just discovered that this few package has been updated and I'm very excited to do this. So today we are talking about two, pack, two packages that is inside the art studio environment that allow you to directly interact with and upload and download file from the Google Sheets and the Google Drive environment through you know a, a sum of the coding. So the package name is actually the first thing I want to cover. It's called Google Drive and Google, Google Sheet 4. Why is it called Google Sheet 4? Because there's a previous version called Google Sheet 1, which actually a few months ago has been completely archived and it's, it's unable to use it because the, the API is not updated and there's some security issue, so you can't use that anymore. So it, it's also terribly inefficient to upload and read uh, upload a data frame to a sheet, the GS edit sheet is, is kind of slow and inefficient. And Google Sheet 4 is a way better platform and it's way easier to interact with. So there are a few things I want to cover today. So for the Google Drive packages, uh, I'm, I'll try to explain how do you upload a local CSV uh, to the Google Drive environment and specify the file type to be a spreadsheet document. Of course, you can change that to CSV and other file type, but I want it to be a spreadsheet document in two things because I can directly edit later in Google Drive and if I want to share it to my other people, other friends that can actually open the file directly without you know worrying about file conversion format and all that thing. Uh, secondly, instead of just uploading the, the whole thing as a new file, as a new file, as a new file again, what if I just want to update the existing spreadsheet? So this is actually very useful certain thing like if you want a report to be done in Google Sheet. But then you, but Google Sheet doesn't have enough function for you to manipulate data. Let's say the the the, the data analytics side in R is a lot faster and a lot better. So you want to pre-process the data in R, so you can actually process 500 megabyte data, 600 megabyte data very easily. But if you are trying to do that in Google Sheet, it's going to be kind of difficult because. Uh, Google Sheet is kind of limited in the in the size of the, the sheet itself as well as how fast it can actually process. And if you are doing such a big data size, Google encourages you to go to Picure it and instead of a, using their free Google Sheet service and so on. So Google Drive is able to accomplish kind of a hybrid between our processing as well as a Google Sheet um, flexibility in sharing to everyone and so on instead of always sharing a file. Uh, then in Google Sheet 4, I'm particularly going to talk about how do you read a file. So how do you read the data from Google Sheet directly without you know downloading file and you know lost your CSV somewhere. So you can actually download the file with Google Drive and Google Drive packages directly into a CSV file. But if you're doing the manipulations, uh, reading data is definitely faster. So how do you of course create a new Google Sheet as well? So this is very similar to the Google Drive uh, API. But it's just a lot easier if you don't want to use both and you just want to stick to Google Sheet 4. So uh, of course you can do roughly the same thing in how to override data using the GS4 which is the Google Sheet 4 package and how do you append data. And if you do a lot of databases you know that appending data to a current data frame is actually very very useful in let's say reporting. So you're extracting a weekly report that you want to upload to, to a Google Sheet which then can be connected to, let's say, uh, Data Studios, uh, App Sheets, or Glide App, or you know all the other online databases or app maker in in other other uh, platform and so on. Because Google Sheets kind of connected to many things. So for the first thing, you of course you want to set your environment. Let me just shift my camera a little bit. I'm sorry if I kill the audio over there. I can't see. So the first thing, of course, you want is to set set the environment to the correct work directory. So in this case, I'm putting it on the folder in my desktop. So it's called uh, Google Tube, which is the Google Drive and Google Sheet tutorial. So shift this a little bit. And of course, the, the third thing is trying to install the packages. Uh, currently, i am installed both of my packages through the GitHub, but I do not recommend that for new user in R. If you are just starting out in R, try to cr constrain yourself within Crane. Uh, there's a lot less error message, there's a lot easier things to deal with. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you the, the GitHub installation code down below. But if you uh, just want to install normal code, you can just go here, install, type Google, and you should have all the things that you need with you. So Google Sheet 4 is here, uh, Google Drive is here. So you can just click that 
Let's just try to do that and click install and it should install this for you. What you actually do is to write the same command over here. So you can also find this command in the um, video description down below, which will link to a website and you'll just find the one that have Google Sheet and Google Drive in it. So the first thing of course is to load the Google Drive again and to do the normal thing. So let's just try to run this and let it load in our environment and let's try to do an authentication. So an authentication will allow the uh, Google Sheet or, or the API or the R packages to directly access, edit, read, uh, and write and delete file for you using a command line instead of actually uh, you authorizing everything every time. So it will store a token uh, locally. So as long as you have the token over here, this package is allowed to edit anything it is in your drive. So be careful. And because if you don't do this carefully, you might actually delete your whole Google Drive. If you're not familiar, create a new account and try that first. And once you're confident, you can just change the authentication. You can see I have two email address here. I might blur them, but you can see there's one and two over here. Okay, so the so before we actually try to upload, of course, we'll need some sort of CSV file. So in this case, I'm using a sample data set from uh, one of the weather data I get from uh, one of the online databases. This is free and public to use. Actually, this appeared in my RNN video. So it's kind of a big file. It's actually 50 megabytes. So we are not going to. So if you go to sample data set raw over here, you can find that it's 15 variable and 420,000 lines. Actually, let's just do it again so that it's easier. So we just do that. Okay. So it's actually the file that's loaded is 420,000 line and that's 15 variables. So you can have a look at that. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a huge data set. So since we are recording a video here, I don't want to overload and I don't want everyone to wait with me. I'm only going to extract the first 100 rows of the data so that the file is a lot smaller. So since we are dealing with a CSV, I'm going to write the CSV into, uh, I'm going to write it as a CSV file. So let's go to the file. So let's just delete this first. So once we have, so let me just delete this and run again so you can actually see what it happening in the real time. So once we run the write CSV command, it will actually write a CSV file into your local folder. As you can see, the original data set is 42 megabyte in size. And the, the thing that I wrote into the file as a CSV just now is only 11 kilobytes. So that will make sure that the upload process is faster. So if you are doing, uh, a lot uploading process as well. Just try to cut down all the junk that you don't want. So let, let's go. So now we are actually finally entering the Google Sheet uh, command and syntax. So the first thing we, we need is to tell the, uh, what is that called? The, the drive or the API, which folder when we're going to go to. So if you actually go to this uh, link, it's actually a folder uh, to one of my folder in my Google Drive because you don't want it to dump into your your home page and then and everything is very confusing so as you can see there's one file here which is the script that i'm using to show the thing just now so there's nothing in here and let's go back to our r so in here the first thing that drive get run is to get what we call a target directory that's why i named the thing td okay so it's not as td it's just td okay so then we run what we call a drive upload command so what does this say is that we are trying to read this CSV file and upload to Google Drive. What should I name it when I upload it? It's going to be sample one when I upload it. What type do I want it to be? I want it to be a spreadsheet after the uploading. And I want the path, which is the folder I want to upload them into. It's actually from uh, the target drive. And we, we, have, we need to put an SID over here because we just need this uh, length of string rather than the whole URL. So this will cover that for us. So you can just change whatever format that you want in the yellow color thing over here and everything should work fine. So if you run drive upload, it should actually take a little while because then you connect to the internet and so on, but it will show you that local file is called sample.csv, which is what we wrote onto our file just now, uh, uploaded into the drive as this file. So this is the ID of the file as you can go let's say go into here you can see we uploaded this file so you can see here we can actually up there you can see the the id on the url bar and you can see the data set that we have over here so it's a 15 column data set followed by of course uh, a, a number row over here so doesn't really matter you can delete that later or you can just ignore it 
Okay, so now we, we settle the uploading. So let's say um, somebody are very, very naughty, they come in and delete some of your data and you came in and you are completely lost and you do not want to create a new file because this file is already linked to 200 different file format that you want. So you want just the data to come back here, but you don't want to create a new file and you, are very, you can't copy paste because you are uh, very lazy and so on. So the other command instead of drive upload, which upload a new file, and cre which create a new file in Google Drive. We can use something called drive put. So drive put is one of my favorite command because uh, when it uploads, drive put will actually scan if there's any uh, local file name. If there's local file name, you run a drive update. If it doesn't have a local file name, you just run a drive upload. So instead of using drive upload and update separately, you can just put a drive put and call it a day. So that's what I usually do, it's much easier. So you will just update the file and you know the, the ID of the file will not change. So you will run input range in between the two files, it will not affect that. Okay, so you can also download the file as a, as a CSV. So this is the same thing. So you just do a drive get to get a target and then put a target here and say I want to download it as a CSV. And the path here, you can see they're different because the path just now refers to the folder you want to upload your drive to. But in drive download, the file is the local path in your computer. Okay, so if we actually go back to our folder just now, you can actually see this is the sample that we downloaded from the Google Drive. The difference between that is that we should have, no, it doesn't download the, the row number here, which is great. So you have your CSV downloaded nicely, very easily, without actually going into Google at all. So you don't have to open up the browser or anything at all. So once we're done with Google Drive, let's go into our Google Sheet 4, which is fairly new and very under recent development. So it might have certain bug that still doesn't work yet. So take some time. Uh, the person that developed these two packages could actually call uh, Jenny Bryan. She's actually uh, engineer. I, I think it's a software engineer in our studio. So she has done some amazing work in, in the whole thing. And uh, go and check her on GitHub. It's, it's amazing of the work she do and as well as the reply that she, she gives back to the community. Okay, so I include some command for you to install developer, t developer tools and how do you use the, the packages that is installed from GitHub instead for all instead of downloading from CRAN, which is the Compressive R Archive Network that is maintained by the R Foundation. And GitHub is a more of an individual maintained packages. Uh, so the GitHub is a lot more, a lot newer, but a lot less stable. That's basically what it is. Uh, so, so of course, the first thing we run, run a library to load uh, the package into our environment. And we use something called similar, it's called a GS4. Uh, just for authentication. It's very similar to what we did just now with the the drive authentication up here, which actually get a token from Google and try to tell Google that yeah, this is me. Don't worry, I am what I am, and I am I'm you know trust me, I can edit the file and so on. Okay, so the first thing is how do we let's go back to our sheet just now. So how do we read the data from Google? So Instead of very simple and straightforward way of just now where it's just CSV upload and download, uh, this is a little bit more complicated because in read um, Google Sheet, you actually need to specify which Google Sheet that you want it to be. So this one, what we call a GS4 get, actually would tell the, 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 the environment or the API which uh, spreadsheet it is, which is why it's usually called SS. So in this SS file, we can actually see the spreadsheet ID, the spreadsheet URL, what's the name, what's the local, what's the time zone, and what is the details of the sheet, you know, what is the name of the sh uh, name, this is the sheet name basically, and you know, all the index ID and, and so on. So all the parameters within the sheet itself. So this is to tell the, the system what, what sheet it is. So if you want to have a certain information of uh, Google Sheet, you can also do this. So let's also get some data that we want to write towards this file. So if we actually open this file, let's see what is in this file. Okay, so let's open this file over here. Okay, so this is also called a sample one. Let's just, um, okay, so let's, okay, let's not use this one. So we, let's use the sample one that we just uploaded just now through. So let's just do it in real time and see if it got any problem, I'm actually quite worried when I do this 
in front of the camera because when everything in front of the camera it doesn't work. Okay, so let's do the same thing. We can actually got a uh, just forget using the same URL and let's actually go to our Google Sheets over here where you can see that it should change because yep, let's just open it again so that it will change. So you can see now there's only one single sheet, only one single sheet. Close it. Uh, a table with one row and eight columns, and these are all the details over there. Okay, so now we actually did, let's get it a little bit more data to write back up because we're just gonna use the same thing. So now let's imagine the same scenario. Uh, somebody deleted this, and you want to use Google Sheet to write back. Uh, this data set. So let's go here and do range sheet. Write. So it's say editing this and writing to this sample sheet CSV1. You can see data is back. Let's try it again. Delete this, delete this, and go to R, run this. It's back. Okay, so this will tell the Google Sheet that you want it to be written to the first sheet. And if you tell them nothing and you tell the range nothing, it will of course assuming it's the first uh, sheet that you want to write into and the range will be the size of the data frame you write into and so on. So you can of course uh, do a column name reformat and try around and see what happens. So instead of actually just uh, reading some file onto it, what if you want to actually download the data, add something on it and, and upload it back? So in this case, uh, you can see here we only until column P. Let's say we want to add a column here to normalize the temperature. So we have a temperature here over here. Where is it? So when a temperature over here, we want to normalize this temperature. We want to scale this temperature and then upload it as a different that uh, upload it as another column in the back. So in this case, you can use a read sheet uh, function. So a read sheet function instead of actually uh, like a GS4 get will give you the information of the spreadsheet. A read sheet function will give you a, a data frame directly. So a read sheet, if you don't specify anything, you will always read from the first sheet and you read everything except the blank cell. So you can actually get something called a data to write. So a data to write is, of course, now is 300 observation long and 16 parameters. That was weird. Let's try it again. Yep, is it 300? I put 300 over here. No, it's only 100. So, yeah, every time you know, every sample data to write, every time when you do everything behind the camera, it works properly. And when you try to film it, and everything doesn't work. Okay, so it, it might be because we are having some problem with that. Let's just delete the file and try again. Okay, so just remove the file. Let's just try again. So, we, we read this sheet. So, it should give us a data frame of 300. Data to write, data to write 300. Where did you get the 300 from? Oh, I know because the, the link is wrong. So we, we changed the link just now. I forgot to change the other one. So let's just read from the same sheet over here. Okay, so these two are the same now. So let's just read from this file, which is this file. It should only have 100. And yep, so we get 100, that's correct. Okay, so now we, we do what we call a scaling using a data frame format. And once you write this, you realize that I added uh, another column over here, normalized T, which is not present just now. Just to prove to you that it's not, let's just run it again. So if you click, okay, so you click on the file, you see that's only 16 total column. The last column is WD degree 16. Okay, now let's just write one which will actually scale this column and add it to a new column called normalized T. So if we go again, you can see that we have increased by one column and the last will be the normalized T, which is the normalized temperature. So of course, we when you do a lot of data science and you do a lot of comparison and analytics, you use a lot of normalized situation. Okay, so now same thing, you want to write it back. Let's just put one so that it makes sure it right to the first one. We can run it again and it will run to this one and let's scroll to the back. Boom, that's a normalized T, though that's correct. Oh, that, that works really well. So let's go back to our thing. So since so we've, we've kind of covered everything, so just one last thing is actually the sheet append. So what the sheet append work is that it adds things down on the blank column or blank rows below. So what that means is that this will only have the first 100 data set. So if I want to add another 100 data set, because you, know, you collect data every day and you just want to add 
that are into the databases, you can actually use Sheet of Pen. So how does it work? Same thing, SS is referring to the spreadsheet just now. Data to write, of course, refer to the data frame that we want to write to the database. So you can just put Data Pen. You can see just now it's only 100. Now we go up to 200. Let's do that again. If we want to go another 100, we can also do this. It will go up to 300. So we can see it just appear directly over here. 300 because the first row is the column name, remember? So let's just try again and then we should go to 400. Yep, now we go to 400. So basically you can do this forever and ever and ever until you run out of cell in Google Sheets. So let, let's just get a recap. I'm, I'm basically done for today and I'm watching Adventure Time. I'm gonna slice that out. Okay, so we have actually talked about the R package for Google Sheets, Google Drive and Google Sheet 4 and how does it work basically. Uh, we're, for the Google Drive, it's relatively straightforward. We are running, a, we, we're just using a CSV file to upload as a spreadsheet and we are actually downloading the spreadsheet as well as you know update an existing spreadsheet using a local CSV. So that is actually exactly the same um, mechanism and idea for the Google Sheet 4 over here. So in Google Sheet 4, we, are, we have accomplished four different things. How to read data from a spreadsheet using the uh, GS get and GS and the reads, read sheets uh, functions and how to create a new one, which is the GS for create. Did I get here? Oh, I didn't put it here, sorry. So if you want to create a, a new a new file that's actually really relatively straightforward, you can go for GS4 create, and you can just really just specify, I want to create something called something funny, and that's kind of it. So once you do that, you actually create, actually that's like a one and over here. So just that it will actually create in your home page. I'm not gonna show you that. You can try to run it and see if you if you actually appear in home page. I don't want to blur out everything in my Google Google Drive later. Okay, so how to override data in Google uh, Spreadsheet using the uh, range write command. So that will actually write to a particular range if you actually specify. Uh, the same same command apply, just A1 to S25 and you update, you update to that range. And of course, if your data size doesn't match that range, it doesn't work. And certain sometimes it will, sometimes it doesn't. Try it yourself. And lastly, we did a how to append data into an existing spreadsheet. So I, I hope that covers up the, the basic tutorial on how to actually interact with Google Spreadsheet using the package in our studio called uh, Google Drive and Google Sheet 4. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week, basically. Bye.